Bennett. 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 Hallelujah. Good morning. I want to welcome you on board once more. This is Apostle Damaris Mombi Kegodo, all the way from Embu. And every time I will be mentioning Embu because that is my location. I want to welcome you. I want to welcome you this morning because of our online service. Today is another exciting day. Today I'm going to speak heavy stuff concerning the new generation that God is raising and what God wants us to have. I want to bless God for you for tuning in and wanting to hear from me. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for everything. May God bless you. I want you to help me to worship the God of this commission. I want us to worship my Jesus. I want us just to appreciate him for his goodness and his mercy. Worship is a tool of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Worship is a tool of having a connection and encounter with the Lord. So I want us just to worship together in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I will worship you forever.
of Chariots of Fire Commission. Greetings from my husband, your father, and the love of my life. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to greet you wherever you are. I know you are watching me. I will not be tired waving at you. Glory be to God. I'm missing you. I'm praying for you. I think about you every day, and I don't fail to mention your names before the Lord. Amen. Today I want us to look at a very interesting topic because last Sunday I was able to tell you about the mind and the thought of God concerning the nation of Kenya. And many people, I am still repeating, many people have called me through the week. Many people have told me what God has spoken to them and the confirmation. Many people are praying for me. Praise the name of the Lord and we will still continue to pray. We shall still continue to pray for our president. We shall still continue to pray for the government, for the deputy, deputy president. And we are going to still continue praying for the church that even when we are outside the tabernacle, then we shall still continue to grow and to knowledge in the works of God and our lives. I want us to talk about the instructions that God gave to me, the instruction that God gave to me, we are going to go to 1 Samuel chapter 22. Chapter 22. We shall go to Samuel, 1 Samuel and chapter 22. Praise the name of the Lord. This is a topic I love. And God was talking to me and gave me the 20 things or 20 prophecies concerning the nation of Kenya on 27th this month, uh, the month of, 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 June, of, of April. And on Sunday, the May, month of May, the month of grace, I was able to speak the 20 prophecies of this nation. And our key word our preference scripture is in Isaiah 34 from verses 1 to 17 that God gave to us. I'm repeating it because out of that, the Lord told me he's raising a new generation and he gave me what he requires for this generation or what will help him, what will help him that is going to be lifted in this new generation. And I'm going to start with the first one, the weapon, the secret, the silent secret, the silent weapon of these warriors that God is raising. Glory be to God. Maybe on Sunday, I will speak to you about the second weapon that God gave to me concerning the new generation. This week on Friday, the Lord opened my eyes once again, and I was able to see the Ark of Noah. I'm still praying to know what is this Ark of Noah. For me, I thought maybe it's because of the quarantine, the church is still locked, but it carries a deep meaning. Praise the name of the Lord. So on Sunday, I'll be able to talk about it because I know God will give me the instructions. I want us to go to the mighty men of valor, the mighty men of war that David had. What made David successful from his enemy Saul? What made him successful? Praise the name of the Lord. I am seeing a lot of battles in the spiritual realm and I'm seeing at the same time victory. Praise the name of the Lord. Concerning the battle of this government, I'm seeing it is like Saul and David. I'm speaking in parable. David and Saul and David. 
So you already know who is David, you already know who is Saul, and who is fighting David. Uh, but the sword of Saul shall be silenced in the name of Jesus. First Samuel chapter 22, from verses 1, I will do all the way to verses 4. David therefore departed there and escaped to the cave Edulam. And when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down there to him. The cave of Edulam can be also this quarantine. Praise the name of the Lord. And everyone that was in distress, and everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented, somebody that was bitter in the soul, or bitter of the soul, gathered themselves to him, and, and he became a captain over them. And there were with him about 400 men, and David went there to Mizpah and Moab, of Moab, and he said to the king of Moab, let my father and my mother, I pray you, come forth and be with you till I know what God will do for me. And he brought them before the king of Moab, and they dwelt with him all the while that David was in the hold. Praise the name of the Lord. Our key word is in verses 2. The Bible says that, And David departed from the sword of Saul. Praise the name of the Lord. And he went to hide in the cave of Edulam. The cave of Edulam is a place of hiding. Every minister of the gospel, every person that God is raising in this new generation to be a person of power, to be the spokesman of God, to be the voice of God in this nation, to be the, that person that will bring revival, praise the name of the Lord, must have been one way or another been into the cave of Edula. The cave of Edula is where you are not known. The cave of Edula is a place, a place of equipping, a place of being trained by the Lord. These 400 men of David, they were trained in the cave of Edula by David. And when you look at verses 1, the Bible says that when the children, when the brothers, when the siblings, when the family of David heard that David had gone to the cave of Edula, the Bible says that, and they followed the brother. They knew there is a refuge. Praise the name of the Lord. I am going to talk about the lamb. Glory be to God. And every person have a lamb. And that lamb, you carry the destiny of a family. So David carried the destiny of the family of Jesse. When, they, when he ran away, when he went to hide, they discovered that this man carries our destiny. They followed him to the cave of Edula. David did not stay with the family in the cave of Edula because he knew in the cave of Edula there is a lot of danger. He knew in the cave of Edula it is only the specific people that God wants the army of Jesus, the army of David, that was supposed to be in that cave so that he can be able to train them. Glory be to God. And he went and talked to the king of Moab and asked him if his family can stay with him. Glory be to God. So today we are going to discover a lot of things about this new generation. In the cave of Edulam, there were people that had three Ds. I call them three Ds. Number one, their quality was they were distressed. They were in distress. They were in distress. They were not satisfied. They were having a lot of problems in their lives. They were not yet satisfied in life. They had a lot of pressure. They had a lot of command from God to follow David, to fight with David. They were tired of the kingdom of Saul and they knew this is David. God have anointed them. We are distressed, like many of us are distressed about what is happening in this government. There is a lot of corruption. There is a lot of intimidation. There is a lot of wickedness. There is a lot of problems in this land. The government is not stable. Praise the name of the Lord. There is a lot of fight between our president and the deputy. And we want peace because the church brought them together. The church is not happy that they are at home. 
So there is a lot of distress. Praise the name of the Lord. Maybe in your home there is distress. Maybe in your working place there is distress. But I'm talking about this army. There is a lot of distress in your ministry, in your calling. You are fasted. You have not seen result. Your time has come. Number two D is those that are in debt. People have been in debt. This kind of war, this kind of warriors, this kind of men of valor, this kind of generation that God has lifted and is lifting. There are people that know what debts are. I don't know, but I've been in debt many years ago in the ministry, in my life. Even eating was a problem. Yet I am learned. Praise the name of the Lord. Meeting the needs of my family was a problem. Glory be to God. Renting a hall was a problem. These are people that are in the cave that God is removing from this cave. They are coming out as man of valor. They are coming out as a new generation. Number three, it is people that are not, they are discontented. They have sorrow. Their souls are bitter. Sorrows in their souls. They are bitter. Praise the name of the Lord. These people followed David. They were bitter. The government of Saul was not doing good. They were bitter. Things are not going well. They were bitter. Some of them had personal bitterness. But we are talking about people that God is raising. They are bitter. They are not happy. They are not contented with what is happening in their lives, in their surroundings. They have the message, but they are not able to reach too many people. They have what they require, but they are not able to get into the audience. Praise the name of the Lord. They have the message of this nation, but they are not able to meet. They are not able to speak it well. They, they are learned, yes. They, they have the skills, but their skills are not being neutralized. I don't know whether you have been in a group or you have been in a place or you are in that condition that I'm talking about, that the message you have, you are only able to minister to few people, yet your message can reach to many people. Praise the name of the Lord. Many of this new generation, they are discontented. God is removing you from the cave of Edula. You have been trained. You have been shown how to fight these battles. You have been shown how to overcome deaths. You have been trained how to fight, how to do warfare, how to make it in life, how to minister. Your character have been molded. Praise the name of the Lord. You have been in the cave of Edulam in prayer for a long time. You have fasted for long. This is your season. You have read the word of God. Let me tell you something. God was speaking to me that this kind of people that are in the cave of Edula, you have taught your members for long. You have taught your members a lot of a lot of messages. You have trained them. Those members, God are making them for you. They are your warriors. Number two, what you have been teaching indoors is your high time to take it outside. It was a message that God was using to train you. Praise the name of the Lord. They were 400 men. 400 men. When have I brought this? It is because one of the silent weapon of great men is who is your friend? Friends matter. Friends can destroy you. Friends can lift you up. Friends can build you. Praise the name of the Lord. Friends can build you up. I want us to look at a few things that I wrote here about friends. Glory be to God. I will not read them. You will go read them in the Bible because I want to teach very fast. Number one about a friend, we have friends that are good and we have wicked friends. I want us to look at bad friends. What the scripture speaks about bad friends in Proverbs 16 and verses 28. That a dishonest man spreads strife and a whisper separates close friends. Who is your friend? This is just a foundation. Because a dishonest friend will cause strife. When you have strife, you cannot run ministry. When you have strife, you cannot run your marriage. When you have strife, you will not concentrate with what God is telling you to speak to the members 
to the church of Christ, to the land of the nation of Kenya. Praise the name of the Lord. Where there is strife, you will not be able to carry your work, your assignment properly. I'm talking to this new generation that God is raising in the ministries, in worship, in praise, in intercession, in, interse in, in, in being a warrior, in praising, even in those that are gospel artists that God is raising, in leadership in this nation. Your friends, if they are dishonest, they will cause strife and they will bring competition in your relationship. You will not be able to carry on your ministry or your assignment very well. A striving person will scatter your friends. Glory be to God. So as I speak to you, you are going to be contemplating and looking at your Wi-Fi. You are going to look at your iPad. You are going to look at your phone, your contacts. You are going to look at your life. Write down your, your friends. Think about them. Who are benefiting you and who are causing strife? Praise the name of the Lord. Number two, scripture. Proverbs 17, 17. Friend loves all the time. Glory be to God. This is a positive one. That a friend will love all the time. I want you to look at that. Your friend will love all the time. Your friend is closer than your brother. These are people you should have. A friend that will love you. When you are going through a trying moment, when you are going through a trying part of your life, when your problems are being exposed, when you are going through battles, when you are going through challenges in your family, in your ministry, in your assignment, you should have a friend who will love you in your poverty, in your raising or rising, in your prayer time. Glory be to God. Friends that will despise you when people will talk about you, those are not friends. A friend will speak to you in time of problems and in time of happiness. Glory be to God. We have Proverbs chapter 27 and verses 9. I love this. Ultimate and perfume rejoices the heart so do the sweetness of a man's friend by healthy counsel glory be to god ointment perfume it is sweet to the person using it to the person surrounding you glory be to god when you wear perfume you feel nice you feel excited that is the way a friend should be that this friend should bring joy. This friend should be, bring softness, sweetness, happiness in your time. Glory be to God. This friend should be healthy in counsel. You need a friend that will correct you like Jesus. Had a friend who corrected him. You need a friend that will counsel you like David. Praise the name of the Lord. The final scripture about it so that I can enter into the world. It is Proverbs 18 and verses 24. Among many, you can look for them. A man of many companies may come to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Glory be to God. There is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Good company will help you. Bad company will ruin your reputation. And in Proverbs 18, 24, the Bible says, a man with many company. So if God is raising you, if God is going to expose you in this nation, if God is going to make your assignment to be, to spread abroad, then you should be a man of few friends. Glory be to God. Because many friends will bring destruction. Many friends will ruin you. Glory be to God. So this is just some small, some few scriptures that you, put, you should put in, in your spirit concerning what I'm talking about. We have just read in 1 Samuel 22 verse 1 to 4. Let us look at these 400 men. David had 400 men. These 400 men, we are going to find them in 2 Samuel. 400 men. 2 Samuel and chapter 23. Second Samuel 23, you go read about it. These are the mighty men of David. 
from verses 8. The mighty men of David. These be the names of the mighty men whose David had. The Teshmites that sat in the seat, chief among the captains, the same was Adino, the Esnet. He lifted up a spear against 800 who he slew at one time. Sometimes when you see me skipping reading, there is always a veil that has covered my face. And after him was Eliezer, the son of Dodo, the Abihite, one of the three mighty men with David. When they defied the Philistines that were there gathered together to battle, and the men of Israel were gone away, he rose and smote the Philistines until he had his hand was weary, and his hand clung to the sword. And the, man, the Lord brought a great victory that day. And the people turned after him only to collect the spoil. Look here. What I'm reading are the mighty men of David, the captains, the key people among the 400 men that were in the cave of Edula. They were trained by David. They became captains of army. But they were captains of captains. They are all that we are going to talk about. Joab, Itai, Abishai. They are captains of these captains. Glory be to God. Now these captains, they did miracles. They fought for David. David valued them. One of them, the Bible tells us, he lifted up a spear against 800 men alone. Number two, so you can imagine one spear, 800 men. How did he make it? It was divine, supernatural power and ability. It was to be taught by David. Glory be to God. Number two man, the second man that was mighty. This is the man that used his sword and he smote the Philistines until his hand could not move, until the sword clung or touched and held and clung. To his hand. Glory be to God. There is another one that was after him, number three. Shama, the son of Agi, the Haratites. And the Philistines were gathered together unto a troop. There are people who harass. You know they harass. Koharana. The Bible says they gathered together into a troop where was a piece of a ground of lentils. Look at this. He was fighting for dengue. Lentils. The man was able to fight. He stood, the Bible says, but he stood in the midst of the ground. He looked that small portion. You, you are, you want to rise. You want to, to have 500, 5,000 people, congregation, so that you can serve God well. No. This man was defending a small ranch, a small ground, a small ground of rent house. The Bible says he defended it because it belongs to the Israelites. It belongs to the Lord. He brought great victory. Number 13, there were three of the mighty, of the 30 chief that went down. Look here. Go read all of it. Go read all of it. Number 16, the mighty men broke forth. There is number 15. David became thirsty. And he said, oh, that I would drink water. The Bible says the other group of men, they broke through Jerusalem to Jerusalem. Between where they were fighting to Jerusalem, there were troops of enemies, but they managed, the three of them, they managed, they broke forth, they came with water. David looked at the effort of this man. David looked at the commitment of this man. David looked at the way this man can die for me. These people, this water I'm drinking is their blood. He said, I will not drink this water. I will offer it unto the Lord. Glory be to God. I wish I'm talking about covenants. There is one covenant of peace. I think I'll teach about it because that is another weapon that God gave to me. Glory be to God. This, this people fought for David, for their master, for their king. Can you fight for your pastor? Can you defend your pastor? Can you fight for the nation of Kenya? Look at the armed forces. They are committed to defend this nation. They die, leaving their wives widows, leaving their children fatherless. Every time I meet with armed forces, I salute them. Glory be to God. 
I congratulate them. I tell them thank you. I have a nephew who is an army, an army, an army man. And I pray for him. And I pray, God, let this man know it is not only a job. It is defending this nation. You, as an army of Jesus, do you wake up in the middle of the night to pray? Do you wake up at midnight or you wake at three? You wake up at four when the enemy has already fought. You are supposed to wake up at midnight. You, latest at one o'clock, latest. Defend the nation of God. Defend the kingdom of Jesus. Glory be to God. Have you fasted since quarantine? Have you fasted in even one meal? Have you given a sacrifice for your pastor to be sustained? Have you given a sacrifice for the nation to be delivered? Glory be to God. Have you read the word of God? What have you done that will defend the kingdom of God? The Bible says, David refused to drink that water. He said, I offer it to God. Praise the name of the Lord. I am hurrying because I want to get where we are. Let us look. These are the 400 men that were with David in the cave of Edila. They were 400 members of David. He knew them. He knew their weaknesses. He arranged them to troops. These that we have read are captains of the 400 troops, 400 men. Praise the name of the Lord. I want us to look at another, for, another group that David had as friends. The 400, they were friends, but they were not close to David. That they can tell him anything. They had to go through their captain. And their captains are the ones we have read about how they defended David. How they defended Israelites. Praise the name of the Lord. How they risked for their lives. But these other captains could not go directly to David. But they could only go directly to these three that I'm going to talk about. These three men, they were friends to David. Glory be to God. Second Samuel and chapter 18. These are the mighty men. I'm talking about of David. Friends, every man with an assignment, you should have an army. Even if it is intercession, have an army. Even if it is ministry, have an army. Even if it is being a gospel singer, have somebody that can pray for you. Somebody that can talk with you. Glory be to God. I want us to look at 2 Samuel and chapter 18. 2 Samuel and chapter 18. The three men that were close to David. Three men that could counsel David. Three men that could advise David. Three men that could correct him. Every man of God, every man carrying an assignment, you should have somebody that can correct you. I hear preachers preach and they say, nobody can correct me. Touch not the anointed. Oh, thank you. The word of God is like a coin. One side we see the picture of our president. The other side we see the lions, the stamp. Glory be to God. So the word of God says, be at peace with all men. The same, same scripture says that flee. Glory be to God. Flee from immorality. The same, same word say that let your enemies be scattered. Glory be to God. The same, same word is saying, do not eat with such people. Hallelujah. So there is the two sides, the word of God. That's why Hebrews, the Bible says in chapter 4, verses 12, the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. It is sharper. It is sharper. Why? Both sides are sharpened. Both sides are sharpened. Glory be to God. So let's look at David. He had the 400 men. He had the captains that we have read. There are many of them, like six of them. The captains, the people that, there are like 15 of them that fought personal battles. We have now these three men. And David numbered from verse 1 to 3. David numbered the people that were with him and set captains of thousands. Look at that. And set captains of thousands and captains of hundreds over them. Captains of thousands 
where jo uh, where Joab Abishai Ab uh, and Ab and Itai and her captains over hundreds are these men that we have read. We have read in Second Samuel chapter twenty-three. Go read all of them from verses eight. And David sent for the third part of the people under the hand of Joab. That part of his army. The third quarter, the third quarter, the third people, the third part. He gave them to Joab to be captain. The third captain under the hand of Joab. And the third part under the hand of Abishai. And the third part or the third hand to the, to the other man. The third part under the hand of Itai, the Gittite. And the king said to the people, I will show go, I will surely go forth with you myself also. Look here. He gathered the first captains were over hundreds. The main captains, they were over three third, 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 third part, third part to the hand of Joab, to the hand of Abishai, and to the hand of Itai. Itai was not an Israelite. Itai was a Gittite. Itai was a son of a strange, of a stranger. When you go to verse to chapter 15, when you go to chapter 15, when David was running away, I will go to there, I will go there. Let us look at these people. Number one person, because Joab was the head of the three of them. Number one person was Joab. Who was Joab? Glory be to God. Second Samuel chapter 19. Who was Joab? Glory be to God. Verses 1, chapter 19 and verses 1. Who was Joab? The Bible says, And it came, it was told, Joab, behold. Why was it not told to Itai? Why was it not told to Abishai? It is because Joab was very close to David, even if there were other challenges. The Bible says, And it was told Joab, behold, the king weeps and mourns for Absalom. Let me tell you something. Every good friend should design your heart, should design your needs, should design your troubles, should design, should know you. My husband knows me very well. When I'm happy, he knows. When I'm annoyed, he knows. When I'm disturbed and I'm not talking, he knows. He knows me up and down. He knows me. I know him. Praise the name of the Lord. Your closest friend should know you like this should know you the way you know yourself. The Bible says, And it came, it was told, Joah, Behold, the, kings, the king weeps and mourns for Absalom. This is the time Absalom had disappeared. When you read down the line, when you read down the line, Absalom had killed the sister, the brother, Amnon, because of raping Tamar. After a few years, three years, he killed, three, two years, he killed Abner. He disappeared. David was sad. When you look at chapter 18 and verses 33, and the king was much moved and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. And as he wept, thus he said, O oh, son Absalom, my son Absalom, would God I be, I had died for you, Absalom, my son, my son. Look at this place. The first mistake Absalom did, he killed the brother. David was mourning. The second mistake, and this is the mistake, when David had the son as dead, when Joab killed David's son, Absalom, the Bible says when David had it, he wept. He cried at the gate. He cried on the top of the, of the wall. And the army had, Joab was told, and Joab was annoyed. When you go from verse 6, the Bible says, And when David wept, and Joab was told, he went to, jo to David, the king. And he told the king, Why are you crying? From verse 6, Why are you crying? Why are you crying? Look at verse 6 going downwards. Why are you crying? Why are you doing this to your own army? Why are you bringing shame to your own army? Does it mean that when the whole army would have died, you would have rejoiced? Are you not happy 
that one person died and your army is alive. Go and tell this army. Talk to them. Encourage them. Who could tell David like that? It would only come from a man that was close to him. Glory be to God. A man that would have come close to him. There are problems. There are things in our lives. Nobody can tell us. Only close friends. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Let's look at another scripture about him. Go read 2 Samuel chapter 13 and verses 29 downwards. When Ammon was killed, Absalom disappeared. The Bible says, and David was mourning. He was sad. And Joab was able to discern the heart of, of David. And he was able to send a woman. And this woman came to his rescue. Let me read it because of the few people that do not believe in the Bible. Second Samuel chapter 13 from verses 39. You will go read. You will go read. You will go read. But verse chapter 14 and verses 1, this is what the Bible says. Now Job the son of Zeruah perceived that the king's heart was towards Absalom. So every person should perceive the heart of their pastor. If pastor is your friend, perceive their heart. Every minister of the gospel, any person, be it a government leader, be it a ministry leader that has an assignment, be it a woman leader, be it an, a protocol leader, you should perceive the heart. You should have friends that can also perceive your heart and meet your needs in the name of Jesus. Let's go to Abishai, the second person that was in command that David loved. Abishai, 2 Samuel 21. I love Abishai. 2 Samuel and chapter 21. And we are still going to go to chapter 18. But first we are going to do it in chapter 21. The Bible says in verses, uh, in verses 16 and 17, and Ishbeab, which was the sons of the giant, this was one of the brothers of Goliath, the weight of whom, of whose spear weighed 300 shekels of brass in weight, he being guarded with a new sword, thought to slay David. But Abishai, the son of Zeruah, uh, the son of Zeruah, helped David and smote the Philistine and killed him. Then the man of David swore to him, saying, Who shall go? You shall go no more out with us to battle, that you quench not the light of Israel. Look at that. Abishai fought the enemy of David. Remember, David killed the brother. So this man was coming to revenge. That's why David carried five stones. The first one was to bring down Goliath. David left four stones for four mighty men to fight these four giants. Glory be to God. And all of them were brought down by the mighty men of Allah. Go read the word of God. The Bible says that, and this man, this giant, equipped, skilled, tall, weighty, wanted to destroy and to kill David, to revenge for the death of the brother. Glory be to God. Like many enemies, when you fight an enemy, don't rest. Don't say, oh, I have done it. I have the victory. No, continue praying. Glory be to God. Continue praying because the enemy will come back to reiterate. Amen. So the Bible says that Abishai told the king, you will not fight this battle. I will help you, sir. You will no longer. His people, the people that were under Abishai, under the leadership of Abishai, under the leadership of this mighty man say you will never go back with us for battle we shall fight for you so that you will not quench the light look here when you go to the same book verse uh, chapter 18 you will read the verse we have read you will read in verses 3 but the people answered you shall not go for for if we flee away they will not care for us Neither if half of us die, they will care for us. But now you are worth 10,000 of us. Therefore now it is better that you send help from the city. 
because you carry the light. You, David, you are you are like 10,000 of us. You alone, 10,000 of us. Look at Abisha. He is saying the same thing. You carry the light. You carry the light of Israel. When you fight, when you die, you will quench the light. The enemy is after somebody's light. And God is raising these people that have strong lights. Just like the stars, they are brighter stars, and they are those stars. They are shining, but they are not that bright. So your light is your assignment. And your assignment is what the enemy is coming after. Look at another scripture. First, uh, First Kings chapter 11. First Kings chapter 11 and verses 36. And to his son will I give one tribe, that David, my servant, may have a light always before me in Jerusalem, the city, which have chosen me to put my name there. Judah was a tribe of David. Jerusalem was a city that God wanted to give to David, to put the name of God in that city. God made a covenant with David that can never be broken, that I will give this kingdom to your descendants. Glory be to God. And because of that, I made a covenant because of that. Your light shall not be put off. You will see this family of David, they committed sins and very bad sins, but the kingdom never departed. Glory be to God. Look at chapter 15. Chapter 15. Look at chapter 15 and verses 4. Nevertheless, for David's sake, did the Lord his God give him a lamp in Jerusalem to set up a son after him and to establish Jerusalem. This was about the king of Joab, uh, jo jo uh, the king Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. Praise the name of the Lord. When he started reigning in Jerusalem, he had a lot of wickedness. But because of David, because of the covenant, God made sure that the kingdom is still under the hands of David. When you go to Psalms 89 and verses 34, the Bible says that just like the sun will never, I have a covenant with the sun, I will never break the covenant of David. Look at Jeremiah 22, verses 30 and 29. The, verse, the Bible says in verses 30, write this man childless, write this man that is kingdom. Let us look at it. Write this man that is kingdom none will take over in his kingdom again. Yet God had made a covenant. Chapter 22 and verses 30. Chapter 22 and verses 30. Thus says the Lord, write this man childless, a man that shall not prosper in his days, for no man of a seed shall prosper, sitting upon the throne of David and ruling anymore in Judah. God was annoyed with the children of Israel. He wanted to break the covenant of David. But at the same time, in Psalms 89, his word is still there. He says in Psalms 89 and verses 39, 34, and verses 34, this is what the Bible says, and verses 34, my covenant will I not break, nor utter the thing that is gone out of my lips. Once have I sworn by my holiness that I will not lie to David. His seed shall endure forever, and a throne as the sun before me. It shall be established forever as the moon and as the faithful witness in heaven. Praise the name of the Lord. God will never break his covenant with David. The same thing. God will never break his covenant with every person that God is raising in this generation. It is you to break that covenant. The Israelites broke the covenant. But when they cried unto the Lord, he remembered the covenant. Glory be to God. I'll teach on that in the next weapon. Praise the name of the Lord. Those we are the friends of David. Let's look at Itai. Second Samuel in chapter 15. Itai was a Gittite. The Bible says that when Absalom took over the kingdom of David and David ran away, Itai refused to be left behind with King with Absalom. And the Bible says, and David told him, go back, but he refused. Verses uh, 19. 
verses 19. Then said the king to Itai, the Gittite, Why go you also with us? Return to your place and abide with the king, for you are a stranger and also an exile. Whereas you come but yesterday, should I this day make you go up and down with us? Seeing I go where I may return you and take, or I may return you and take back your brethren. Mercy and truth be with you. And Itai answered the king and said, As the Lord lives, and as my Lord the king lives, surely in what place my Lord the king shall be, whether in death or life, even there also will they with thy servant be. And David said to Itai, Go and pass over. And Itai the Gittite passed over, and all his men, and all their little ones that were with him. Praise the name of the Lord. Itai is a good example of friends who will never forsake you. Praise the name of the Lord. That even when your ministry is going through a hard time, even when in media people are talking every rubbish about you, people like Itai should be there. Praise the name of the Lord. Those are the friends that David had. There is one friend that David had that we read about, but he died bad. His name is Jonathan. The Bible says in First Samuel that Jonathan loved David just like he loved his heart. Jonathan, First Samuel chapter 18. The Bible says, and the heart of Jonathan, verse 4, verse 3. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant. He loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan striped himself of the rope that was upon him and gave it to David and his garments, even to the sword and to his bow and to his girdle. Look here. He loved him like he loved his soul. He made a covenant with him. He gave him what was needed in the, in the in their government of that time of Saul. He removed his gown that from today you are like me. He gave him the sword. This is a special sword of Jonathan. I give it unto you. Praise the name of the Lord. He kissed him. They made a covenant. But when you continue reading, the Bible says, when you read in chapter 33, if I'm not wrong, when you read about David, about Jonathan, in chapter 23, in chapter 23, let's do 23, First Samuel 23, and verse 17. And he said to him, First Samuel 23, verse 17, and he said to him, Fear not, for the hand of Saul my father shall not find you, and you shall be king over Israel, and I shall be next to you, and that also Saul my father knows. Look at that. And they made a covenant. Verses 18, they made a covenant. David had a friend, one friend that was called Jonathan. Jonathan always told David the secrets of the father. But at the end, Jonathan was unable to separate himself from the father. When you look in the last scripture, the last chapter, when you look in 2 Samuel chapter 1, the Bible says that, and Saul and the father died. Glory be to God. And the Bible says in verses 26, I am distressed for you, my brother, Jonathan. Very pleasant have you been to me. Even when he never came to join the army of David, he was still pleasant in the sight of, J of David. Of David, And the Bible says, you were pleasant to me. Your love to me was wonderful. Passing the love of woman. Praise the name of the Lord. Jonathan loved, David loved Jonathan like his own soul. Like the love of a woman. Passing over the love of a woman. The way David loved uh, uh, Abigail is not the way he loved Jonathan. His love was strong. More than the love of a, of a woman. More than a love or the love of a woman. Praise the name of the Lord. Because their souls were knitted together. But why did he die, Jonathan? Because he joined the wrong person. You can join the wrong person even in the ministry. Be careful who is your father. Be careful who you are joining. Because that person you are joining will bring down your ministry or your calling or your assignment when you are lifted high. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. I have taught my members about how assignments 
you can go high and come down because there are powers that are fighting you and also because there are people that you are with that are jealous of you. Who is your friend? Jonathan was a friend to David, but he refused to disconnect himself. He died early. If he was with David, he would have lived. Glory be to God. Let us look at a few friends very fast. Job. Job, let us look at people who had friends. Job chapter 1. This one's our run. For David, I had to enter deeper. For Job chapter 2 and verses 13. Job was a man of valor. Job was a God-fearing man. God wa Job was a son of the pro of God. The Bible says that when the sons of God gathered, he was always there apart from the time the enemy asked God for permission to punish him. The Bible says that when Job started suffering, the suffering of Job took only nine months. When he started suffering, his three friends met him, but they never talked to him. Glory be to God. The Bible says in Job chapter 2 and verse 13, so they sat down with him upon the ground seven days and seven nights, and none spoke a word to him, for they saw that his grief was very great. Verse 12, and when they lifted up their eyes far off and knew him, they lifted up their voice and wept, and they rent every one his mantle and, sp and sprinkled dust upon their heads and towards heaven. Verses 11 is talking to us about his friends. Now when Job's three friends heard of all this evil that was come upon him, they came every man from his own place. Eliphaz, the Tenan, the Tema, the Temanite, the, the Hilbert, the Shur, the Shuhite, the Shuhite, and Zophar, the Namathite. For they had made an appointment together to come to mourn him with him and to comfort him. Job did not have good friends. There's three friends. They were not good friends. Bildad was not a good friend. Eliphaz was not a good friend. Zophar was not a good friend. Why should you have an appointment to go see your best friend when they are, your best friend is going through a hard time? Any friend that asks me for an appointment to see me, I mark them. They are not my friends. My true friends don't get an appointment. People that we cry with cannot get an appointment from me. My phone is free. Hello, can we meet? Can I come? I want us to talk. When I'm in trouble, I don't need you to book an appointment. None of my best friends, I call them BFF, none of them can book an appointment. They will call me in time of trouble. They will not need to call me to come to my house. They will come, they will knock the gate and come. These people, they ask for an appointment. None of my best friends will ask the other friend to follow them to come to encourage me. If they hear anything, if they hear any trouble, the phone will ring. Glory be to God. The phone will ring and I will see them in my house. Job friends, we are not friends. The Bible says they made an appointment. How can your genuine friends make an appointment to come and console you? Number two, they saw him from afar. Why should your best friend see you from, from afar? Glory be to God. Number three, the Bible says his friends, they sat down for three, for seven days. No talking, only crying, discouraging this man by their tears, showing him how trouble has come to his life. And when this man, Elphaz, opened his mouth, opened his mouth in chapter 4, he started on other problems. The Bible says in verses 13, when he opened his mouth, he started saying, in thoughts, from the visions of the night, when deep sleep falls on to men, fear came upon me, and troubling which made all my bones to shake. And then a spirit passed before my feet, before my face, and hair of my and hair of my flesh stood up. In still, it is still, it is stood still, but I could not discern that form. The form, therefore, an image was before my eyes, and there was silence. And I heard the voice say, "Look here, you have been quiet for seven days in my house. I call you my BFF. 
Silence. You don't call me. You just cry with me. When you see me, you cry. You know there are those sisters. When they see you, they say, oh, he cry. <laughs> me, I knew. I knew. I knew. They are saying sweet nothings. When they went, when they went to sleep, Eliphaz was the first friend to open their mouth. I wish he kept quiet. He said, Job, you are my friend, you know that. But when I slept, hey, a spirit came before me. A God came before me. I saw an image I could not desire. They brought fear to David, to Job. The Bible says in chapter 7 and verses 14, if I'm right, the Bible says, Then, now, this spirit of this friend entered in Job, bad dreams, powers of darkness tormenting you. They came from Eliphaz. Now they have entered in this man. The Bible says, when, verses 13, when I say, my bed shall comfort me, my coach shall, shall cease or ease my complaints, then you scare me with the dreams and terrify me through visions. Job started receiving terrible dreams. I'm speaking on dreams. And there is one thing I'm telling people. God is not the author of terrifying dreams. Satan is the author of terrifying things. As a man thinketh, so he is. So because Eliphaz and Bildad, Bil and Bildad, and Zophar, and Zophar, sorry, Zophar the Bildad, and, uh, uh, and uh -huh, Eliphaz, Elfaz, Bildad, and Zophar, these three friends. Because they were not talking, they were just thinking about this man, how he's going through problems, how he is suffering. The Bible says, Bill has received that dream. Because of speaking that dream, there was impartation in the dreams of Job. Dreams of fear started entering. Who is your friend? Even his best friend disappeared from him. Praise the name of the Lord. She disappeared from him. We don't hear about the wife. He, she went silent. Am I talking to somebody? Praise the name of the Lord. Who is your friend? Those were three friends of Job. Those are three friends of Job. I'm not going to talk about the rest. I'm talking about these friends that Job thought are his friends. Look at Esther, another woman. She could not have attained her kingdom without having friends. Number one friend was Mordecai. Was Mordecai. Mordecai was an anchor to Esther. He took the girl, the orphan, took care of her. And the Bible says in Esther that when you go, when the, when the king, when the king demanded or needed another wife, a queen, Mordecai advised the niece and said, please, my daughter, when you go to that place, don't, I, don't expose your identity. Don't say you are an Israelite. Don't even mention it. Just keep quiet. Because this kingdom shall be given to you. Keep quiet. This is the first man. He advised this man, this woman. He said, keep quiet. And true to the word, when Esther went into the kingdom to be purified, to be separated so that she can be purified, so that she can be modified, so that she can be trained. The Bible says she kept her, her identity quiet. She kept silent. Many of us that God is raising, you must learn to hide your friends. You must learn to hide your family. I am seeing ministers of the gospel. They are just saying nothing. Sorry to say this. The pictures you are sending is when you are having selfie. My father hates selfie. He says when you are having selfie, you are selfish. You are just showing people how your house is looking. How your children are looking. Hey! You are showing people you are eating ice cream. Why are you not showing us when you are praying? Serious men and women of God that God is raising. And when I say men and women of God, I'm not talking only about preachers. I'm talking about even gospel artists, ministers. I'm talking about governor, governors, senators, president, deputy, MCAs, women representative. Don't expose yourself too much. Don't. 
The media is so much of people exposing themselves. You go to the saloon, you are exposing yourself. Hey, some of people have been asking me, why am I not seeing your husband picture? Why do you want to see it? He is my secret weapon. Why should I expose him? I will expose him the right time, but not now. No. Even in the posters, I don't. Do you think I don't like putting the pictures of my children everywhere? The pictures of my husband everywhere? The pictures of a pregnant Apostle Damaris everywhere? I want, I desire, but the secret of the rise of the new generation, keep your things to yourself. You are going to swim in, you want us to know. You are cooking in the kitchen, you want us to know. You will buy a new dress, even outside your house, selfie, send it. Hey, why are you not showing us when you are waking up in the middle of the night, roaring, entering under the bed because you are afraid and God is not hearing you? Me, myself, and as an apostle, I even enter in my wardrobe. Because sometimes I'm hearing God is not hearing me. I enter and I close it. I speak in tongues for two, three hours. Esther hid her identity. The only time she exposed her identity was the right time when the king had to intervene for the children of Israel. Number two friend was Hagen, Hegai, the keeper of women, the keeper of Esther. The Bible says in Esther, let me look at my, my Esther in chapter 2, chapter 2 and verse 9. The Bible says, and the maiden pleased him, and she obtained kindness of him, and speedily gave her her things for purification with the such things as belong to her. And seven maidens. Others did not have seven maidens, but Esther found favor in the eyes of her guy. And the Bible says, she was given seven maidens, and which meant to be given her, and that which was meant to be given her out of the king's house. And he preferred her and her maids to the best place of the house of the women. Even her place where to stay, it was the best. Her guy, the Bible says that when the time of Esther arrived to show herself to the king, she carried what her guy advised. Verse 10. Esther had not showed herself, her people, not, had not showed her people nor her kindred, for Mordecai had charged her that she should not show it. And Mordecai walked at it. Okay, the Bible says that. And she appeared before the king in verse 16. So Esther was taken, or oh, verses 15. Now, when the town of Esther, the daughter of Bishar, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her to his daughter, was come to go in to the king, she required nothing but what a guy, the king's chamberlain, the keeper of the women, appointed. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all of them that looked upon her. Praise the name of the Lord. A guy was one of the key men. He showed Esther the secrets that the king loved. He gave her what the king loved. Praise the name of the Lord. A guy knew that this thing, when you take to the king, you will emerge number one. You will be the next queen. Praise the name of the Lord. And I'm sure he guy also found favor in the eyes of Esther because of this time. Praise the name of the Lord. Can your friends tell you your mistakes? Can your friends advise you? Can your friends correct you? He guy is the one that was beautifying Esther. Finally, she gave, he, she was given what the king required. And he made Esther to sit on the seat of the queen. Praise the name of the Lord. The final friend was king himself. King loved Esther. He said, in fact, the Bible says that when you go to be, when you appear before the king, and when he lift up the scepter, praise the name of the Lord, your case is done. The Bible says, when Esther approached the king, the scepter was lifted. She held the head of the scepter. She obtained favor. It moved, the, it moved the king. 
There are things as women we do that move our husbands. Nowadays women, we are allowing our house girls to do everything in the house. Cook, serve your husband, iron for your husband. Hmm. There are things we do as women. The heart of the woman, the man, is the stomach. There are things you can do. You, are, you can even surprise your husband and pay the fee. If your husband has common, common sense, he will honor you. He will value you. It is touching the head of the sept, the head of the scepter. Praise the name of the Lord. Because of touching that, the Bible says, and the king was marveled and he said, what do you want to be done? Even if it's half of this nation, I'll give it to you. The king favored Esther. Praise the name of the Lord. The king loved Esther than any other woman. The king fought for Esther, redeemed her, valued her. In fact, from that, when you read, after the, the, the children of Israel found conviction, we don't hear anywhere else that the king returned to his room. Officially, this is mine. The king started sleeping in the room of Esther. Praise the name of the Lord. Let us look at the final man. His name is Jesus, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, <laughs> the God and the Lord of the church. Jesus, Son of God. Jesus had so many friends, so many friends, but there is a few that we are very close to him. Number one friend, these are the 5,000 people. Luke chapter 9 and verses 12. The Bible says he fed them with the bread. There are friends who come in your life because they are finding food. There are friends who come in your life because you are doing them good things. There are people who come in your life because you are treasuring them. You are praying for them. I tell people in, the, in, the, in church, there are people who come to me because of what I carry. So I have to work hard for what I carry. Because if it goes, they will go away. Well, have you ever thought about your pastor or a pastor or a man of God or somebody going through challenges with many friends and he's left alone? They are friends like the 5,000 people. Some of them, they did not come to hear the preaching. They came to be fed. Jesus said, Mahemegate, Maria, Madie, give them bread. Let them eat. Let them go. Because he knew, I will not take them back with the hunger because they will preach against me. Oh, Jesus, his ministry, the sick we are healed. Couldn't he provide for us? <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. They never carried home. Because what he did, when he multiplied, the food became like man. So if they carried, it will get wasted on the road. Then they will find a door to fight the ministry of Jesus. Oh, this is poison. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody? Glory be to God. Jesus had 5,000 people. Luke 9 and verses 12. Number two kind of group that Jesus had is the 120. They were in the upper room. They were in the upper room. The Bible says, he said, go to the upper room, wait for me. Wait until the Holy Ghost is given to you. Don't start preaching without receiving the Holy Ghost. When you have received the Holy Ghost, in chapter 1 verse 8, when you receive the Holy Ghost, then you shall be witnesses to, to, to me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the outermost part. Praise the name of the Lord. There were 120 of them. They stayed there. They waited for Jesus. They waited for him. And even after waiting for them, for him, the Bible says some of them left. There were only 120 that we are left. There were like 500 of them, but 120, they went to the upper room. The 120, they went to the upper room. The 120, they included the disciples. They included the women that supported Jesus. They included the family of Jesus. 
the mother of Jesus, people that were financial supporters and intercessors of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. They followed Jesus everywhere. The 120. Praise the name of the Lord. These are people that they received the power of the Holy Spirit. Number three, kind of group, the 170. The 70. Luke chapter 10, the 70. The 70, these are very interesting kind of group. The Bible says that, and he called, he called the 70 of them, and he did not give them power. He sent them. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them two by two before the face, before his face, and to every city and place where he himself would come. Therefore he said unto them, look here, he called, he did not even call them. The Bible says, and the 70, after these things, the 70 appointed, he appointed, he did call. When you are called, you are graced. The Bible says he appointed, the way a minister will appoint or a mother will appoint, where? Wash those utensils, where? Go work for me in my shamba. In church, I can appoint. I appoint people. I tell them, you will do this. You will do this. So sometimes they are not people that are, yes, they are in my heart. They are in my heart. I love them. But I cannot entrust them with the greatness. I cannot give them grace. I will entrust them. Wake up. Go and help me clean the toilets. Where? Come. Clean the table. Come. Help the minister. You know? The Bible says he appointed them. The 70 of them. He did not give them power. The Bible says he sent them. <laughs> and place where he, he said, and to, and to before his face, and to every city, and place where himself would not, would come. Therefore said unto them, the harvest truly, in fact, he didn't even send them. The Bible says that he appointed 70 of them. He sent them. 70 of them sent them. He didn't give them money. He didn't give them provision. Why? He wanted them. You have been thinking of me. You have been fighting me. You have been seeing like I'm um, just a normal person. You have gotten used to this grace. Now I am sending you two by two. I'm not even giving you power because you don't deserve it. Go heal the sick, yes. Go perform miracles. Don't buy anything. Don't carry your sandals. Why? Because there will be provision. He wanted them to know the power in his hands. These are people that follow ministers for signs and wonders. In our church, if somebody comes in Embu County, people like going to divine us. So when they come to me, they say, Pastor, I want you to pray for me and know what is eating me. God to show you. Immediately you tell me that I don't pray for you and I mark you. I don't. Why? I'm not a diviner. I'm a woman of God. I'm a minister of God. Praise the name of the Lord. These are people that come in ministries. These are people that will follow this new generation because of the power, because of what has happened, the manifestation, because of testimonies. The moment this, there is no testimony, you will not hear your name again. These are people that go to churches because they are testimonies. These are people that you have to breathe on them. Jesus said, go, go in my name, go, go, do it, heal the sick, let there be peace, where you will speak peace, there will be peace, I don't entertain such people, I don't keep them close to me, I don't even allow them, sometimes they will call me pastor, I have headache, I will say it is well, it is well, if they call me again, pastor, the head is still there aching. I will not answer. I, in fact, I rub you out of my mind. These are the 70 men. Jesus wanted them to know the power in his grace. You just breathe on them. They fall. They believe that is where. Let me tell you, falling is not power. You can fall because you have feared me. There are places you will go. People will push you to fall. When you receive the power of God, you wake up not the same. You wake up testifying. You wake up your problem is gone. You wake up with a great impartation. Glory be to God. We have number four. 
the 12 disciples. I love the 12 disciples. These we are called. These we are chosen. Ha. These we are given power. Glory be to God. They were given power. The Bible says that even when Jesus finished uh, instructing the, tw the 70 of them, when you continue reading, the Bible says that, when you continue reading, the Bible says that, and Jesus turned, and Jesus turned to his disciples. Praise the name of the Lord. Jesus turned to his disciples. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says that in verses 19, Behold, I give to you power to tread, uh -huh, verses 17. Then the 70 returned and joy, saying, Lord, even the devil subject to us through your name. And he said to them, Behold, Satan has lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give to you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by any mean hurt you. The 70 disciples, uh, the, 70 peep, the 70 followers of Jesus, when they came out with the testimonies, when Jesus realized now they have known there is power in his name, he did not give them power to cast out devils. He gave them power to tread on serpents, power to tread on scorpions, power to tread upon their enemies, and nothing will hurt them. Why? He knew as they deliver the sick, as they heal the sick, the enemy will fall. Why? I see Satan fall like lightning because of the first ministry. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says, in that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit. I thank you, O my Father of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to babies. Even so, Father, for so it seems good in your sight. And all are delivered in my, in my name. All things are delivered to me of the Father, and no man knows who the son is, but the father and who the father is, the son and, and he to whom the son will be revealed. And he turned, 23, he turned him to his disciples and said privately, look at that. These are the 12 disciples. After he was done with the 70 disciples, he turned to the 12 disciples. He spoke to them privately. The 12 disciples, God, Jesus spoke to them privately. He never spoke to them publicly. He delivered them privately. He rebuked them privately. He taught them privately. He made them for himself. He owned them. He chose them. When you go to Mark chapter 10, Mark, when you go, praise the name of the Lord. These disciples, Let's do Matthew chapter 10. These are the disciples that received power. He spoke to them privately. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see those things which you see and have not seen them. And to hear those things which you hear and not heard them. The 12 disciples heard what Jesus was saying. Saw what Jesus was doing. That the 70 could not see. There was a distinction between the 5,000 between the 120 and between the 70. Praise the name of the Lord. These 70 are the ones that departed from Jesus. This 120, there were 500 of them. The 120 were left. When you read in John chapter 6, verse 66, the Bible says that they departed. Let's go there before we go to John. Let's go to John. Put your hand there. John 6, 66. The Bible says in verse 66, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. When he said, I am the flesh, I am flesh, whoever will eat my flesh, whoever will drink my blood, praise the name of the Lord. It was something that had never been heard. The many that followed Jesus, more than 500, they disappeared. The 12 disciples were left, even the 70. We don't hear about them. Praise the name of the Lord. We don't hear about them. Jesus was left with only 12 disciples. These 12 disciples, the Bible says, chapter 10, Matthew 10. And when he had called to himself 12 disciples, he gave them power. The 70, we are not given power. The only power that we are given is to step on scorpion. When you go through a trial, you will, you will overcome. 
when the snake will bite you, you will trend on it. It will not bite you. That power only. Power to fight for yourself. But chapter 10, he gave them power. Against unclean spirits. To cast them out. They were given power. You think casting out devils is easy. Telling the devil, you come out. You demon of sickness, come out. It's not easy. Casting out devils, you must have power. Supernatural ability to cast out. Supernatural strength. To heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of disease. Healing. Some people look at me when I'm praying for the sick. When I pray for the sick, they are healed. Ulcers die. Cancer die. Fibroids die. Praise the name of the Lord. Latest testimony was a fibroid. One of the elders in the church. The fibroids went. Praise the name of the Lord. It is not easy. It is power. The new generation, they are receiving power to cast out devils, to heal sicknesses, to heal diseases. Praise the name of the Lord. These are the 12 disciples. They knew Jesus. They saw him cry. They knew his time of prayer. They fed him. They clothed him. They washed his clothes. They walked with him. No wonder when he died and he rose again, people started saying, they look like Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Because they lived together with Jesus. They knew when he is tired. They knew when he is annoyed. Praise the name of the Lord. They were taught of him. Let's look at another, another friend. Number five. These are three best friends of Jesus. BFFs. <laughs> best friends forever. James. Peter. John. They went to the mountain. Praise the name of the Lord. They went to the mountain of transfiguration. Let's go to Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9, just next. Luke chapter 9 and verses 27. But I tell you of a truth. There be... Okay, you read from verse 1. You read from verses 20. Read from verses 20, 21. 22. Read all of it. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says, For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed, when he shall come in his own glory and in his Father's hand of the holy angels. But I tell you of a truth, there be some standing here, we shall not taste of death. It is they that see the kingdom of God. This is the time of transfiguration. The Bible says from verses 18, go read all of it because of time. 19, they answered in saying, John and the, uh, John the Baptist, but some say Elijah and others say that you are here and say to them, but who do you say I am? Praise the name of the Lord. The transfiguration, when he went to, the, to be transfigured, when the power of God was manifested over his life, he had three friends. One of them was Peter. The Bible says that, and he said to them, but whom say you that I am? And Peter answering said, the Christ of God. And he straight changed, uh, charged them and commanded them to tell no man that thing. Praise the name of the Lord. These are three. They went to the mountain. They went and Jesus was transfigured. The Bible says, and Jesus asked, who do you say I am? And Peter said, you are Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. She, he could not have known he is Christ if he never went to the mountain. When Jesus was not transfigured, they could not have told him that he is Christ. But now they have seen Elijah. They have seen, they, they have seen what has happened in the mountain. And they said, no, you are Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. You are Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Peter stands for the rock but not what we say, the small rock. But when it comes to Jesus, his relationship with Peter is not a rock. His relationship is the man of faith. You are Christ. He said what you have said, what you have seen, don't tell it to them. Don't tell it to them. Don't tell it to the disciples. I took the three of you. Don't tell the eight other disciples. Praise the name of the Lord. Don't tell the nine disciples. Praise the name of the Lord. 
Peter was a man of faith. How was he a man of faith? Matthew 16 verses 18. Matthew 16 and verses 18. He was a man of faith. How was he a man of faith? Upon this mountain, upon this rock, this revelation, you have said that I am the son of God. You have said I am Christ. It is a revelation. Upon this revelation faith, upon this revelation, Peter, this faith you have is what I will build my church upon. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Praise the name of the Lord. Another time is in Luke 22. Luke 22. Praise the name of the Lord. I hope I am blessing somebody. Luke chapter 22. I like giving scriptures from 31 to verses 34. Luke chapter 22 verses 31 to verses 34. The Bible says that when they took the Holy Communion, Jesus said, one of you will betray me. Peter, you will betray me. He said, no, I cannot betray you. Then in verses 31, the Bible says, Simeon, Simeon, behold, Satan has desired to have you that he may sit as swift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you are converted, strengthen your breath. Praise the name of the Lord. One of you, it is our work for the Son of God to be tempted. One of you will betray me. And he looked at Simon and he said, Simon, Simon. He called him twice. Satan has desired to swift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you. He knew faith was in Peter. He knew that this faith will be tried. He knew all the disciples and his ministry will look upon Peter. He said, I've prayed for you that when you are converted, when you come back from your betrayal, you will strengthen the church. You will not fail back in faith. Glory be to God. We have the second among the three, James. James was a man of wisdom. James chapter 1 verse 5. Is any one of you lacking wisdom? Let him ask, let him pray, and he shall receive wisdom. James was a man of wisdom. When you read about James, in the book of James, he is telling us on how to bridle our tongues. He, these are things that he learned from Jesus. He is talking about how sin can hinder you to enter into the kingdom of God. He is speaking to our humility. He is telling us, do not be unstable as waters. He is a man of wisdom. Jesus was a close, a close friend to, Simon, to, to wisdom. He needed wisdom. He ran his ministry with wisdom. As a new generation that God is raising, let your wisdom be heard. Carry your ministry with wisdom. Carry your family with wisdom. Praise the name of the Lord. There are ministers who put their families behind ministry. They say God first, ministry second, family second. If your family scatters, your ministry scatters. Put God first. Put your family first. Second, put the ministry first. Your assignment should be that. Glory be to God. Praise the name of the Lord. The third one, you go read James chapter 1 verse 5. Mark chapter 10 from verses 35. He asked, they asked, we want to sit on the left. I want to sit on the left. James said, let me sit on the left and let my brother sit on the right. Praise the name of the Lord. We have the third one, John. John was among the three people. John means love. Every person wants to be loved, even me. If my husband can stay two days, one day, without sending me a message of love, I will trouble him. I will ask him, you have done nothing. Today you have done something. You have done good things, but there is one thing you have not done. And he will know. Everybody wants to be loved. Even the mighty men that God is raising and women need to be loved. Pastors need to be loved. Intercessors need to be loved. 
members of the ministry need to be loved. Supporters need to be loved. Glory be to God. John is a man of, hmm, of love. I will not expound that because the final friend of Jesus was John. John, and this is the final one I'm doing. John. John was another final group number six. Jesus. Thank you, Father. John was a man of a man that loved Jesus. I'm going to talk about it in, in length. That's why I brought it closer. This is a man that loved Jesus in and out. In and out. In and out. John records events. When you read in the book of John, John is the last, uh, the, the last books among the New Testament. The four books that we are written, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. When you look at John, he wrote events that were never written by other apostles because he was close to God. He was close to God. He was at the bosom of Jesus. He was at the bosom of Jesus. He slept at the bosom of Jesus. Glory be to God. He is the one that wrote the Revelation, the book of John, and the book of Revelation. He is the man at Patmos, at the island of Patmos, that had a deepest experience of revelation. He is the last man that stays for 99 years who died the oldest among the disciples. Because everything Jesus did, he saw it. Every feeling Jesus had, he felt it. He was the eye. He was near to God. He was near to Jesus. Glory be to God. I want us to look at, at, uh, at John chapter 19. John chapter 19 and verses 26. This was a man that stays at the heart of God, at the heart of Jesus. He felt the heartbeat of God. There are people we need as mente, men of valor. We need them in our lives. People that know when we are crying. People that know when we are happy. People that will know today is my mother, my father, birthday. And they will alert everybody. Praise the name of the Lord. Verses 26. Then Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by him whom he loved. He said to his mother, woman, behold your son. John, you love me. I will not leave you in the hands of these disciples. I will not leave you in the hands of these disciples. I will leave you in the hands of my mother. I was a heart to my mother. Now I, I will not leave my mother wounded. I will bring the man that I loved to my mother so that he can be able to be telling my mother my secrets. Praise the name of the Lord. He left his best friends into the hands of his mother. But when you continue reading, he say, then says he to his disciples, behold your mother. And from that hour, that disciple took uh, the disciples took her to his own home. Look at that. He told John, John, this is your mother. That is what he says. He says to his mother, behold, you are son. John, this is your mother. You will never lack food. You will find comfort. You will find peace. The womb that carried me, I give you to that womb. John, this woman will nurture you, will cry for you. He looked at his disciples and told them, Disciples, this is your mother. Take her. So you see that? The disciples took the mother of Jesus so that they can take care of the mother the way Jesus took care of the man. But to John, she went with the mother, to the disciples, both of them to be taken care of. Praise the name of the Lord. He was the friend of Jesus. John 13 John 13, I will not read John 13, all of it. But John 13 is talking about when Jesus was talking to his disciples. And he said, one of you will betray me. The Bible says, and the disciples wanted to know. So they told Peter. They called Peter. They said, Peter, ask. And Peter called John, beckoned on John. And said, John, come, beckon. Then John came. And when John came, he said, go ask the master who is going to betray him. 
chapter 13. There are people you cannot listen. There are people you can you there are people who cannot come close to me, but they will come to people that are close to me to get close to me. There are people with the petition, personal petition. That even when I am busy, I don't want to see many people. Listen, there are people who will go to those that are close to me and they will come and I will be able to see them. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 23. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him that he should ask who it should be of whom he spoke. Then he then laying or lying or laying on Jesus' breast says to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus said, answer, he it is to whom I shall sip, I shall give a soup or I shall give a mosel when I have dipped, I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the soup or the mosel, he gave it to Judah Iscariot, the son of Simeon. Praise the name of the Lord. Who is your friend? Jesus was a friend. John was a friend to Jesus. John was able to see and write about the washing of feet. We don't find it in other scriptures deeper like this. The wine, water that was turned into wine. John was able to see. He wrote it because when he entered, he must enter with him. So there are things John used to see that the other two disciples and the rest of disciples could not witness. When you look at the Samaritan woman, it is only the Samaritan woman we read in the book of John. The rest went for lunch. How did he write it? He must be with Jesus. He must have kept Jesus to see it and to write it. Nicodemus, he must be with Jesus to see the conversation or conversion of Nicodemus. When you read John 15, as I finish, when you read all of it, the Bible says, John was able to show us how Jesus related, how Jesus was able to relate with the disciples. The next portion, how the disciples needed to relate with one another. And the other portion of, of John 15, how we, the church, should relate with God. Praise the name of the Lord. John 17, the same thing. It is talking to us. It is talking the same thing. How Jesus prayed for himself. John is writing and saying, and Jesus prayed for himself. He continues, and Jesus prayed for the disciples. He continues, and Jesus prayed for believers. Only a close person can give the deep details as John gave. Revelation was written by John because he was closer to Jesus. And I believe even in heaven, he got the best gift, the best reward. Praise the name of the Lord. Who is your friend? Who is your friend? If my friends are gossiping about me, I mark them. I'll just smile with you, but you are not in my heart. If I tell you something, as my best friend, in confidence, I hear it with another person, I disconnect myself. I keep quiet. In my phone, I've checked. I don't have unnecessary friends. I delete them. Who, people who don't call me, I have deleted them. If they will call me, I will appreciate. People who don't send me messages to encourage me after, after services, or even during quarantine, especially this quarantine, if you are not sending me a message to check up on me and you call yourself my friend, I have put you in my list. I am very careful who I choose. My friends are those that we can talk and pray. My friends are those that I can open my heart to. I can cry and they will, record, they will console me. 
console me. My friends are those ones that they will tell me hmm, that message you preached. My friend, you didn't pray well. My friends are those ones. There are, there are times I will pray for one hour and sleep and my husband will wake me up. He say, mm -hmm, sweetheart, wake up. One hour. An overseer. One hour. Please, with the saints, with the members, the whole nation, the whole Ebu County, please pray. Glory be to God. I want the new generation to ask God for the right friends. People that matter. People that are not just going to fill your page, but people that are going to stand with you. Glory be to God. I am done. I want you to take one minute. I want you to take one minute. We have been praying. I told you the Lord has given us an assignment to pray for the nation of Kenya. I am done when I tell you about what God told me. The mighty men that God is raising they need to know the secret, the weapon, the silent weapon for their raising and their maintainers. Next Sunday, I will speak about the covenants or the altar that every mighty man that God is raising should deal with. I want us to pray for the nation of Kenya. I want us to pray for the nation of Kenya. And I will stand with the Proverbs chapter 11. I'll stand with the Proverbs in chapter 11. Praise the name of the Lord. I will stand with chapter 11. Hallelujah. Verses 3. Thank you, Jesus. Let's do verses. The integrity of the upright shall guide them, but the perverseness of transgressors, transgressors shall destroy them the righteous the righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way but the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness the righteousness of the upright shall deliver them but the transgressors shall be taken in their own naughtiness when a wicked man dies his expectation shall perish and the hope of the unjust man shall perish the righteous is delivered out of trouble and the wicked comes in his stead. We are going to pray for the nation of Kenya. We are going to tell God, let the wicked perish. Let the wicked man perish and let the upright man be lifted. Number two, let the wicked man die so that their wickedness can perish and let the hope of the unjust man perish in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the nation of Kenya. We stand with the Proverbs 11. Let the wicked perish and let the righteous be lifted. Let the wicked perish and let the righteous be lifted. Let the wicked die and let the expectations of the wicked perish. And let the hope of the unjust man perish in the name of Jesus. Macabro Sita. Let the righteous kalamro tia pazia kada. Let the righteousness of the perfect become direction to his ways, and let the wicked fall by his own wickedness. We pray for the nation of Kenya. I pray for the president. I pray for the deputy president. Shelebo sari barakada, marege derebo siri magadia, aya tori mazegede. Let the wickedness of the enemy against them perish. Let the expectation of the wicked against their unity perish. Karabos and Derebosi, Marege Derebosagade. Let the world that is surrounding the president against the deputy president be broken down. Let it fall like the wall of Jericho. Sherebo Zendebosia, Shareba Ganderebosigiria. Maraga de Brezugunu, I pray for the right decision in the government of Kenya. Zaga de Brosundo Bosigiria, Mara, Protia, Poria, Terima, Zegede, Baragade, Marigede, Bagado, 
May the grace of God rest upon you, my members of the ministry of chariots of fire, and my viewers in Jesus' name. Let the peace of God that passes man's understanding rest upon you during this barren time. May the God that I serve, the God of all grace, the God of signs and wonders that you have seen in this commission, go before you and camp around you, making the way straight, making the way clear for you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to pray for you this week that your week is blessed. The enemies of your life today, I silence them in the mighty name of Jesus. Every accusation raised against you, I silence it in Jesus' name. I pray with the blessings that we are given in Deuteronomy 28 by God to Moses to the Israelites. May your stores be full. May your baskets be full even during this time of quarantine. I want to pray that the God of this commission will defend you, will shower his blessing and surprises into your life. I decree and declare that your week is favored of the Lord. Sicknesses will go away from you. Today, in the name of Jesus, you will see the end of this tribe. You will see the end of this season. With your eyes, you will see the terrifying, horrible events that God is going to bring to the enemies of this nation. In the mighty name of Jesus. You will be protected by the children of Israel during the times of the plagues in Egypt. In the mighty name of Jesus. God will protect you like he protected Noah and his three, his three daughters and sons and the wife in the ark. In the name of Jesus. You are here. You want to receive Jesus Christ as your personal savior. I want you to repeat after me, friend. I come before you, Lord. I am a sinner. I have heard your word. I repent my sins. Jesus, write my name in the book of life. Erase my name in the book of death. From today, I enter into a covenant of salvation. Thank you for saving me. I pray for you that the salvation you have received from Jesus shall honor you, shall encamp around you, shall bring protection and preservation, shall mark your name. And I pray that you are going to get a church if you do not have one. Get a pastor that will nurture you and take care of you. You are in Embu County. You don't have a church. All you are saying, I have been following you, woman of God, and I feel you are the prophet of this season. You are the prophet in my life. I want to join you. Or you have received Christ, and you are saying, I want to be your member. I welcome you in my hands, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you, we bless you. We give you praise. You are honored, you are preserved, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise.